Hey friends, it's Alex from Vulture Culture and welcome to the Fundamentals of EQ. Today we're going to be talking about parametric band EQ. Before we get started, please like this video if you find it helpful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all of the tutorials. I'm going to be using ReEQ, which is Reaper's stock EQ plugin, but you could use whatever EQ plugin you'd like. So let's get started. Okay. So right now we're EQing the snare drum. Now, band EQ, as I was describing sort of in the first video, it works in, unlike a filter or a shelving EQ in that it emphasizes certain frequencies uh, around uh, the frequency you set, but not as much frequencies around it, which is determined by how much of a slope it has. So right now, I'm boosting a lot of mid-frequency on the snare drum. And now I'm going to cut a lot. You can hear that although I am cutting quite a lot of the frequency spectrum, you can still hear plenty of the hiss and some of the impact. Now the reason that you want to use a parametric EQ a lot is because this is where you can start getting really surgical with a mix. For instance, you might want to emphasize something around 2K, which is where the ear is really sensitive, if you feel like something's not popping out that much in a mix. So if I uh, unmute these... I might want a little bit more of this frequency, or I might want a little less. Sounds like. Now, what's really useful is getting into the bandwidth and really digging in here. And I recommend that when you're just doing kind of standard EQ, uh, to actually use the default bandwidth. Um, it's pretty good, and one of the the tricks to using parametric EQ is you don't want really too narrow of a frequency because if you listen to this you can hear it's actually making a note now around this frequency just under what is this uh, 915 if I change this it'll be a different note especially around frequencies that our ear is very sensitive to. It's like the most grating, annoying sound. But if we use a, a much wider bandwidth, we're going to be able to mix a certain frequency uh, much better without getting any shrieking or what's called resonance. We want more of one frequency spectrum or maybe we want some mids. Put some attitude in there. Now, uh, for this in the snare, I actually think it needs a little bit of uh, thump. That's helping it a lot. Snare drums usually need some good impact somewhere between 100 and 300 hertz usually in this region is uh, very important for the snare to cut through in a mix. And there's also a, an annoying ringing frequency somewhere in here and I'm gonna be able to use actually I'm guessing it's around there because just looking at the frequency there seems to be uh, something so one of the great things that you can do with uh, band EQ is actually isolate really annoying frequencies and the way you do that is by sweeping so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a moderately narrow uh, bandwidth and I'm gonna listen to when it gets really bad So that is definitely the frequency, and I'm going to try and get this really nailed down. So it's this frequency here. Right. Now, by actually, I can just cut some of that out. So here's the snare again without it being boosted ridiculously. But you can still hear that, that ringing going on. Alright, so by cutting out that annoying frequency, it might not sound that dramatic, but if I turn this off, you'll hear it again. 
by doing these surgical cuts like this, and this isn't even as surgical as you could get, you can get really surgical with this, and it's a lot of fun to be really precious with sounds and sculpt them out. But by removing that annoying frequency and boosting with a broad band around a, a frequency that I think just needed more overall uh, uh, information in this region in the mix, we've, we've gone from kind of an annoying ringing snare to an impactful, really clean sounding snare. So that's just one of many uses of parametric band EQ. Also, it occurs to me um, that in the shelving video, I should have mentioned that uh, Reaper's stock shelf is actually this very gradual slope. Uh, and, and I like using it on around uh, one octave bandwidth. Here, it works more like what would be uh, familiar to most analog consoles. They have shelves that work like this. I'm not sure exactly why, but in ReQ, they have more of a gradual slope uh, shelving filter. And I think the reason they did that is just because uh, a lot of what's called like tilt EQ, which is just like if it sounds really dark or really bright, you might want to just cut some of those high frequencies out without uh, really clamping down on them like you would if you had a more dramatic uh, shelf shape to it. And oppositely, if we were to use the other form, it actually has a sort of like a, an, an in, like a pop much higher above the, the cutoff frequency if we move the uh, bandwidth further in this direction, uh, which is interesting. But generally speaking, uh, you could use either just the default or I like to use uh, one uh, because this is more like a familiar analog console uh, high shelf. So anyways, just want to add that in there since I overlooked it in the shelving filter video. Uh, please like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all of the tutorials and I'll see you in the next video.